come by our good friends at Dynon, the folks that have set the world on fire with some beautiful avionics that seems like everybody else is copying Dynon, <laughs> but in fact, uh, you have led the way in many, many ways. Now you've got a new thing. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Paul Dunscombe. Yep. Or Dunscombe. He says he answers to either pronunciation. <laughs> Paul, uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about, now we know the screens, although uh -huh. there's some new features, we want to know about that too, but there's something special about this particular display that I want you to tell me about. What am I asking about? Absolutely. Um, so these are the, um, the quick, pa quick panels from our sister company, Advanced Flight Systems. They're based down in Canby, Oregon. And this is a ready-to-install RV7 panel. You would purchase this from us. I mean, like this. Like this. All they, the switches and lights and blinking knobs and yeah, whatnot? Absolutely. So everything everything you see here is exactly how it ships out from the factory. Wow. The customer does not have to do any wiring behind the panel here. It's almost almost literally a plug and play system. Drop it into the into the airplane and you've got a, a, a you've got your panel done. What we find what needed this fills in the market is while builders love riveting, they love building the, the aircraft from the ground up, wiring can be daunting. About 70% of our tech support calls are wiring related. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, if you look at the back end of it here, I don't know if we can tip it or anything, can we? Yeah. All right. You look at the back end there, there's a lot going on. And actually, this is somewhat simplified because of the way you can do it. Exactly. But there's a lot going on in here. Yep. And, you know, if, if I was capable of doing all the building of the airframe, I might get to this part and go, well, yikes, that's a yep, lot. Absolutely. Now, while we got it down here, I want to look at that, that bright red panel in there. Uh, and tell me what that is, Paul. Yeah, it's called the Advanced Control Module. It's, um, it's unique to us. It's got all the circuit breakers built into it. Um, so this is your creation as well? This is. It's okay. uh, unique to us. Um, again, created down in, in Canby, Oregon, manufactured down there. It, Basically, all of the wiring is point to point. So the harnesses come pre-assembled. Point a, to point meaning you plug it in one place, you plug it in the other place. Plug is it in the other place. Means? There's okay. not. Uh, you don't have to take all the pigtails and route them out to different places in the aircraft. It's a. It's a very straightforward system. Our. We actually have an automated cabling tester, so we know that every cable <laughs> that ships out of the factory is going to be good. So you you're testing have, every single connection here before absolutely, it goes out. Absolutely. Um, so not only does it make the the wiring straightforward. Uh, it, it makes the panel a very good looking panel. Uh, we do all, all sorts of customization. Um, we have, you know, if you go on our website, we have pictures of every panel we've shipped. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So this one here, I think you told me is for an RV. RV7. Which is there, there's like a, a lot of those out there. Correct. So, so an RV7 builder would get yep. all of, now, uh, was that include this or this is part of the structure of the airplane? Uh, that, correct, yeah. So this, is, this part here, the, gray, the dark gray part that you're seeing, this and actually everything would be behind part it. of the panel that, like, this would mate with the structure of the I aircraft. I see, okay, this, so this, so this like is this. the whole package, is, exactly. and this part just joins up with the airframe. Right. Got it. But I'll, to give me an idea, I, I don't I don't ask you to list every airplane, but sure. hit some of the high ones that, uh, that commonly go, oh, we've are taking advantage of this. Yeah, Sonexes, all of the RV series, uh, of course. Um, We've done Sonics's. We've done um, uh, Kit Foxes. We've done. I mean, we've we've done. I caught you off guard. Yeah, you're yeah, asking yeah. you to give okay. me a list. Yeah. The point is, a lot of yeah, them. Yeah. We'll get a web address later, yep. and, and they can find all sorts of stuff. But the basic attraction here is quick panels, meaning, well, it's quick. It is quick. Absolutely. Now this is a partnership with uh, a few years ago. There was Dynon, and there was Advanced. Right. And then you joined up, and Correct. this is a product, one of the products. Yeah. Of that join up. Exactly, and and we do still have the two brands. You know, we have Dynon and Advanced Flight Systems are both branded the same. Advanced is listed as a Dynon company. Um, we do similar things, but we also have some differentiated um, aspects. You know, they they're the ones that created this panel concept. Um, we've done the HDX concept with this tilt panel, and the marriage of these two is a really compelling option. Um, Advanced still makes their uh, their glass cockpit displays. They're still innovating on that front as well. Um, and we really like having the options in the, in the market. Uh, customers often ask, should I do, do an advanced display or a, or a dine-on display? And to us, frankly, it doesn't matter. It's, it's kind of transparent it, to you, it's huh? It's transparent to us from a business standpoint. What we really want is the customer to have the best possible experience. If they're more comfortable with the user interface of the advanced, they go with that. If they like the tilt panel, um, you know, this is nice and turbulent, so you can go and touch the screen. Um, from yeah, the right. You always want to sort of anchor a finger somewhere because yep. if you're if you're doing this in flight, the touch screen is brilliant. Yep. But if you're in some air where that's a little challenging, you've got the button option as well. Exactly. Then, so. Exactly. 
So basically, if you know how to run an iPad, Absolutely. you kind of know how to run a Dyna. Yeah, exactly. Except for all the extra buttons you get to push. Right. That are more fun. Yes. So, Dyna, excuse me, Advanced is in a different location than you, so you're shipping them parts down there, I gather. Correct. And then they're going, okay, it's such and so airplane. Right. And they're building up the panel. Mm -hmm. They're wiring it. They're going to your new, uh, what, what is the, the, the red box? What do you call the red box? It's called the ACM, or the Advanced Control Module. Advanced Control Module. Yep. And that is a thing that uh, uh, where all the, uh, the power sources and, and, and sensor sources come into that first? That's correct. Okay, yep. and then are distributed to the actual instrument. Absolutely. Yep. And all of that, the user doesn't do anything. Uh, well, yep. I mean, he's got he's to connect it up to power, and he's got to right. do a few things. Give me an example of some stuff that even if you bought the whole quick panel concept, you'd still have to do as a builder? Um, installing the engine sensors is going to be the biggest part. Ah, okay, um, sure. There are some remote modules. Uh, for example, if you want to get your ADA HARS, the thing that, that provides all of the primary flight display instruments, if you want to have that um, be in a magnetically isolated place, you might mount that in the, you know, in the wing ah, or out, okay, out, okay, uh -huh. you know, on the aft side of the aircraft. But, Overall, um, most of the modules are going to be able to live back there. Your transponder, your engine monitor, all of the, the modules that kind of create the magic that you see on the screen are going to live behind the panel. Most of it's right there, then, yeah. just a few remote things. A few, you know, outside some air connections up to the engine and then yep. a power source, I gather. Right, yep. But that's not, that's not much work compared to what no. it would take to get all this done right. Right, right. And, you know, it's kind of like a lot of people feel about plumbing in their house. Yeah. No, I'm not going to try that. That takes, a, that takes a plumber guy. Exactly. Well, this is kind of plumbing of a different sort. Leave it to the, the experts here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, why not? Yeah. So, if I said, okay, look, I, let's imagine I do have an RV7, and I say, all right, I've, I've done with everything else, i got a few more things to do, but now I'm to the panel. If I said, great, I love this, I don't want to do that part. Right. Uh, I'm looking for a price value, but not not with the instrumentation, But and I, and I know these things change, but I want to... The difference between me figuring it all on my own uh -huh. and just go doing this. Well, what, what the would first that question be? I'd ask is, how much is your time worth? Yeah, well, because <laughs> it's going to be some hours. It's going to be some hours. Um, that that is the biggest saver. Um, you know, honestly, the 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 panel material is not that expensive for a builder to do. Uh, the wiring, um, the wiring is going to be roughly on par with what they would buy from us. Um, we, we do get some scale efficiencies by, by virtue of buying a lot of switches in quantity, a lot of the panels in quantity, um, a lot of these, you know, basically all of the things you see here, we're getting at a, at a lower price. I would say you're, the average builder is saving in just pure dollars, one to $2,000. Okay, so it's not um, really so much about the dollars, it's, it's mostly about the time. I, I, I don't have exact stats, but I would, I would not be surprised if the average builder saves 30 to 40 hours. Oh, wow, on. that's quite a bit. Yeah. Especially after you've got the airframe done. Now yeah. you're starting to get close. You begin yep. to, it looks like an airplane now. Right. And you want to get flying the thing, yep. and you don't, oh man, yep. now i got to do all this wiring stuff. Right. And right. you know what, it's a lot of niggling little things yep. back there to do, yep. and to get wrong. And to get and wrong. And to create yep. 70% of your calls. Exactly. And all of that, and yep. you're just like, boom, you're yep. past it. Yep. The money is approximately the same, so it's yep. about saving time. Yeah, a VFR panel will start at about 19,900. Um, okay. And then IFR, including the certified navigator, uh, that'll run up to about thirty-four thousand to thirty-five thousand. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, it's such a far cry from the old days when digital first hit the certified right. market, and they were six figures and well up uh -huh. from that. Absolutely. And this does all that stuff. It does. The same data source. Yep. Maybe it doesn't have that pile of certification paperwork right. behind it, but you don't need that on no. a lot of aircraft, so Correct. why bother with all that? Yep. Well, I want to open the uh, brochure up for people. Can they find a copy of this online? Yes, they can. Uh, all I'm of just, our brochures. I'm just going to kind of flip on it here because beside the pretty pictures, there's all kinds of information about pricing and other stuff. So people that want to know more about what aircraft and what it all yep. is about, you can find this right online then. Yep. What about ADS-B? That's on a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. I know you folks have been working on it. Yep. Tell me the story about how we handle that now. Yeah, so we uh, we sell a complete ADS-B out and in package. You, of course, you only need out to be compliant. Um, that, in, that entails a, a, a 2020 compliant GPS that needs to meet the requirements of the, T, of the TSO, but not meet the TSO itself. In experimental and LSA, you, ah, you don't actually okay. need to That's have That's an interesting it, distinction. It I'm is. not sure it's, I knew myself. So. It's, it's, tough, it's tough to get that message out, but for experimental and light sport, they do not literally need a TSO GPS. The GPS needs to be, uh, needs to meet the requirements found in the TSO, and the, the manufacturer needs to have the data to back that up, which we do. 
So we now sell a 2020 compliant GPS for $590. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Wow, and really? Okay, that's an excellent price. Absolutely. We've been hearing much higher numbers than that, so right. that's good. Yep. Now you have to have some Dynon stuff for that number to be effective, right? Correct, yeah. so then you would need the transponder. You would need, yeah, you, of course you'd need at least one of our displays and, and the system that goes with it, and then a transponder. Uh, we, have, we sell both class one and class two transponders, which is just, the difference is just their transmit power. And, okay. um, but both of them are Mode S. We've been selling those for years and they're yeah, a great Yeah, a lot product. of people already have that. Yes. So if they already have those other compatible pieces of equipment, adding the ADSB out, which yep. is required by the law now, pretty Correct. soon anyway, yep. uh, that's just uh, under $600. Right. Wow, that's a great deal. Yep. So right. basically, Dynon, uh, DynonAvionics.com, right? Uh, yeah, DynonAvionics.com. And, and then, then go to products, products yep. and then quick panels will show up there and you yep. can get all the information you wanted. Absolutely. Okay, great. Yep. Well, lots of information about Dynon over the years because I've had the pleasure to fly behind many of these devices and they're great. I love them. Yep. And I think a lot of other people obviously do too. Absolutely. You've had a good run of success in the market. You can find lots more about that and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com.